My name is Pete Kleffmann. I'm the country director of KFW in Kenya. At the same time, I'm the sector coordinating, uh, coordinator of the German Development Corporation and responsible for KFW-funded health programs here in Kenya. And my name is Cynthia Masharia. I work as a program officer working in the health sector here in the KFW office in Nairobi. KFW basically um, represents a German financial corporation here in Kenya, which means that uh, we are um, supporting the government, the Kenyan government here, in achieving their objectives. So basically, um, with a mandate from the BMZ, which is the Ministry for Economic Cooperation in the Federal Republic of Germany, um, we are mandated to carry out the financial cooperation arm of development cooperation and uh, with that we support government um, achieve um, the goals that they have in the various sectors. So within the health sector we are specifically involved in reproductive health and healthcare financing. Reproductive health is very critical because uh, it has a bearing um, in all uh, sectors that is um, when you have to think about development in, in you know, the wide um, perspective, you always must consider issues of human resource and uh, therefore reproductive health becomes very central in that. Uh, we are working on behalf of the German government, um, as Cynthia said, supporting the Kenyan government. Our focus is strongly poverty oriented, so we are looking for solutions to the Kenyans on how to fight poverty uh, in Kenya not only in the health sector but also in other focal areas we call it for example in the water supply and in energy and in agriculture as well we have also additional educational programs uh, we are supporting the construction of um, primary schools and uh, poor urban areas I think that which is worthwhile to mention is that uh, in, compared to other donors KFW is working through the government, so uh, the money which is committed to the Kenyan government will be, will be used by the government, government itself uh, for the agreed purposes and programs. So KFW is not implementing, the government is implementing, and this is uh, because of sustainability issues. We like to have a situation where the Kenyan government by its own means and capacity can implement priority programs for the future development. Mm -hmm. We are a long-standing partner in, in the health sector and we've been always uh, there to support the government in uh, reproductive health issues. I think the, the reason behind is that especially in the 18th and 19th um, Kenya had a, a very high population growth and um, so we, we saw yeah, this is an area where we can provide uh, experiences and knowledge uh, to support the government to control the, f the, the further growth of population and with this control also to control future investments and development. If we talk about gender, gender is a cross-cutting issue across all our programs, which means that uh, in all sectors, not just in health sector, um, we have to be sensitive to gender dynamics which means that we then must address um, issues that relate to both women and men to ensure that uh, you know, issues of equity are also addressed in as far as uh, development is concerned. So gender is fairly important, it's cross-cutting across all our programs. OBA or Output Based Aid is not a new thing um, and Kenya was not the first uh, country where um, this approach was started and, and, and tested. But of course we had to adapt it to the Kenyan's conditions and, and, and the overall framework. We started with the first pilot in 2005. The distribution of vouchers to poor women started in 2006 for a first period of three years. Currently we are at the end of the second phase of OBA and next month we will then start uh, phase number three. Of course, we don't want to continue like this uh, till phase number, I don't know, 100. Uh, so there is a long-term perspective we like, and this is our strategic goal, that reproductive health services will in future be covered by a social health insurance scheme or by uh, social health insurance schemes, uh, various schemes here in Kenya. Uh, 
we had, for example, um, social health insurance in Ghana, but in, as far as I know, Ghana was not covering family planning. And we think that it's very important that in, in a health plan for poor Kenyans, reproductive services are included. I think um, over the years we have seen OBA um, uh, provide a lot of benefits, especially to the poor women. Um, the first thing is uh, we realize that uh, financial access is a big barrier to healthcare um, services for a lot of women. So um, with the voucher scheme, we are able to sort of go around that because um, the voucher allows them or gives them access um, to health services so they don't have to pay any extra money. And therefore that has helped um, a lot of women um, access quality health care and deliver um, under skilled attendance. I think it's a matter of fact that uh, after two phases we implemented uh, here in Kenya, so in total six years of OBA voucher program, that the vouchers increased access for a part of population which never had access to um, qualified services. So the number of deliveries, skilled attendance deliveries increased for our target group. Um, secondly, and I think this is an effect which is always, always a bit underestimated of the voucher program, it has the voucher allowed the service providers to invest in quality and in capacity. Um, so each and every voucher client coming into a hospital represents for them an additional source of income. And this is especially important for public hospitals because they are chronically underfunded and they can't afford the all to implement all the waivers or free fee services which they should do. So they have a lot of clients which are not able to pay. So for them, they are in really bad situations, though they are lucky for each and every one who can pay the bill and uh, contribute to the, um, the recurrent or unit costs of a hospital, to run a hospital. Now, interestingly, for the private um, hospitals, despite the fact that reimbursement rates are below their unit costs for most of them, they also invest in capacity. So why that? And I think... Um, there is a very important effect of the vouchers um, and that is that it's a stable income or a mean to have a stable income for a service provider for a uh, health facility. So they know, okay, I will have 100 deliveries with voucher clients and, uh, this, uh, and then that's, that's why I will have an income of this amount per month. So once I know I have a steady income, then I'm ready to invest even with my own money. So we have a huge increase, we had a huge increase in capacity uh, in the last six years of all health facil facilities which are accredited or were accredited. So we are working on the improvement of our accreditation and um, quality assurance uh, scheme. In fact, we decided, or the government decided, to outsource this function to a private um, institution or company, uh, which then will allow that during close visits uh, we will have not only a certified quality level, but an improvement in quality. And so one aspect is, for example, how to manage and how to handle with youth. Uh, uh, or experience is that for delivery but also for family, family planning a huge percentage of the OBA clients, uh, clients are minors so uh, and um, they need specific attention and spe specific communication and, uh, and services at the health facilities and uh, in future you know, we are about to discuss to work together with youth clubs to have a link between yeah, youth organizations and uh, health clinics, which are then more or less spe specialized to give services to youth. I think in the region of East Africa, the model can be more or less copied and uh, used by the other countries as well. But this depends a bit on the institutional setup of a country and the health sector in Uganda and Tanzania. That's why we have certain 
specific uh, features uh, in each and every country. But the basic principle is the same. The principle is that you will sell subsidized or give for free subsidized vouchers to very specific target population. And I think this is an important uh, aspect and there, this is one aspect where OBA in Kenya was very successful, is how to target poor. Mm -hmm. So we developed a, um, a targeting tool for this and we believe that um, this is one of our yeah, um, good points of, of our advantages of uh, this approach, really to select uh, the most needed person. Since it's highly subsidized, so you have to make sure that the uh, subsidies are really well targeted. Um, as Mr. Fleffman said, we have to target a certain um, group and of course then we can't cover the whole um, spectrum of women. Yet um, again, uh, we also know that uh, there are other programs that are running in parallel to what we do. There are other organizations that are also giving perhaps similar or you know, certain services of reproductive health. And then we also know that within the Kenyan government system, there are also certain features that are put there to sort of caution this group of women. Of course, um, not all of them may benefit from that. And when I say these features, I talk about perhaps exemptions and waivers. And um, again, not all of these women would benefit from that. So yes, uh, that gap exists and there is need to address it. And I think the government is also um, aware of this. And uh, when we have the discussions on uh, coming up with a national social health insurance um, scheme or you know system, I think these are the issues that now will be addressed because we have to realize that there are different um, categories of socioeconomic you know, uh, perspectives and all these need to be addressed within that. So whereas uh, programs like OBA address a certain um, category of women or Kenyans, what happens to the others? These are the questions that are sometimes still open yet um, need to be addressed and I think if we are able to come up with a you know, social health insurance scheme, then we would be able to address that. The voucher program, of course, is not a remedy to all problems in reproductive health. So the voucher program here in Kenya is, yeah, you can call it a fast-track measure to improve MDG 4 and 5, which is the, the maternal mortality rate and the newborn uh, mortality rate. Um, Kenya is doing very badly uh, in this regard. Uh, and. If you have only limited amount of funding available uh, for this program, it makes sense to uh, focus it on the most needed target group and these are the very poor women in Kenya and I would in, in rural and in urban areas. So that's why uh, we focus on, on the last two quintiles of poverty uh, because in this population, the mortality rates are the highest. So if you work and improve first uh, 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 this group of population, you will have a bigger impact in general nationwide. So we start we started just there where the need is the biggest, yes, and uh, of course this in function of funding available we would like uh, to have it scaled up, not only geographically, but on, also with regard to services and uh, with regard to um, other parts of uh, population, for example, the informal sector.